welcome back students today we are going to start a new chapter that is urban livelihood chapter 9 class 6 political science in previous chapters we discussed about the livelihood of rural areas like how people live there what they do for their livelihood and in this chapter similar thing we will study but about urban areas so first of all let's talk about what is livelihood so livelihood may be defined as it is a work or occupation undertaken to fulfill the basic requirements and of course we all know that what our basic requirements are like food water shelter clothing these are our basic requirements and for these basic requirements whatever we do that is livelihood now there are two types of livelihood urban livelihood and rural livelihood so you can see a lot of people doing different work here some works are defined here like some vegetable vendors are there stalls of kinds of flowers are there people of people a person are selling newspaper auto rickshaw you can see filled with school children a cobbler under a tree roadside barber a woman was pulling a cart with all kinds of plastic bottles box hairpins clips etc a person on cycle trolley carrying vegetables rickshaw standing in a row waiting for customers so these are some uh, some work that people are doing in urban areas in the previous picture that i have shown you now there is a survey in ahmedabad 12% of workers in the city were people working on street so there are different types of occupation that people used to do like some are some have their stalls on roads some have some are businessmen some have showroom so there is an there is there is a survey in, that happened in ahmedabad and it was found in that survey that 12% of worker workers in the city were the people working on street means lot of people are working on street either they sell things or repair them or provide services maybe they may be like rickshaw puller auto rickshaw drivers or maybe cobblers those who repair our slippers and shoes they are not employed they are not employed by anyone and there are some characteristic of their work that they do okay so they have to think ab uh, about that how much thing they will purchase if we take example of a vegetable vendor so on a on previous day they have to first calculate everything they have to think that how much they will purchase as well as where and how to set up their shops because do they they don't have permanent shops they can be asked to dismantle their shop at any time by the police hence they have no security along with that they have they always face this fear of dismantling their shops because they don't have any license to put their shops on the street because they co actually cause a lot of problem for uh, to traffic also that's why vendors sell things which are often prepared at home example pani puri as we all eat pani puri we all are aware that how vendors used to uh, prepare that pani puri they first uh, do everything every pre pre preparation at their home and then after they uh, come with their uh, things to sell now here are some pictures of uh, uh, some street vendors you can see a women selling sarees or shawls a women selling some uh, idols of god here you can see some plastic plastic and uh, some clothes are uh, sold by people and here of course our favorite pani puri this is these are the examples of uh, street vendors now uh, there are almost 1 crore street vendor in the country working in the urban areas if we talk about the amount of or the, uh, of the or the uh, total data of street vendors in our country in urban areas especially they are 1 crore and street vending uh, was seen as obstruct obstruction to the traffic and to people uh, walking so yes this is a big issue 
that uh, people generally see these street vendors as obstruction to the traffic and the common people because they put their shop on the footpath and uh, the mobile vendors are also create a lot of obstruction in uh, traffic also so many organization also came uh, to protect them uh, from uh, this from any kind of uh, uh, humiliation or dismantling of shops and these type of problems and they also put the uh, put uh, the importance of these street street vendors uh, that how much beneficial they are to common people governments also taking some steps to protect uh, these street vendors as this livelihood this the, the street vending or uh, the people those who are working on street they also doing those things for their livelihood to live that's why uh, government cannot ban these street vendors but yes they can provide some facilities to these street vendors like they can um, uh, they can actually uh, give a place to street vendors to uh, sell their product where they can sit together and sell their product without causing any uh, obstruction to the traffic or the common people uh, they can make uh, hawking zones also uh, as I explained, they can sit together and sell their product in a partic particular area. Then mobile vendors uh, should be allowed to move freely. Yes, uh, for mobile vendors as they have like a tailor or something else uh, with the help of which they move from one place to another place and sell their product, produ uh, products. So it is important to, uh, for government also to protect their livelihood. Now here you can see uh, actually this is a kind of place which where often the workers who live in cities because they don't have enough money like if we talk about rickshaw puller or someone uh, we find these type of uh, uh, generally uh, places for uh, these common people those who don't have uh, enough money to buy home uh, in urban areas okay so second type of very famous occupation that we see in urban areas are business person Yes, they have their own shops. Uh, they buy the shop and they do business also. They are not employed by anyone. Uh, they are not similar to street vendors. Street vendors don't have enough money to buy large amount of produce or product. But business persons have a lot of money and uh, they can manage a product for a long period of time. They are not employed by anyone of course they do give employment to other people uh, they are permanent these are permanent shops and uh, nobody will come here uh, to dismantle like police cannot dismantle any kind of permanent shop of course because they get license from municipal corporation on behalf of that license they have to pay some amount of money to municipal corporation municipal corporation also decide on which day of the ma week market has to remain closed this is all this decision can be taken by municipal corporation now in the factory workshop areas there are some workshop areas where some people work labor chalk you may have seen a kind of labor chalk where some labor uh, means for uh, where many types of labors basically used to gather together and uh, people on daily wages hire those workers like for any construction site where either for loading some uh, uh, lifting some loads or uh, dig pipelines or telephone cables so these labor uh, generally do a uh, physical work okay and they are generally hired for uh, for uh, daily wages on daily wages they have a long hour of work hours of work also and they have they don't give get any kind of holidays on sundays too they don't get any kind of festival holidays also now the other kind of occupation that people opt in urban areas are uh, like office areas like we can take example of sudha she is a marketing manager and she has to supervise uh, 60 salesperson in uh, in her uh, reputed area 
now the she is a permanent worker so let's see some benefits that permanent workers actually get they get regular salaries of course saving for old age that they also get provident fund provident fund is a kind of fund uh, uh, that they get when they uh, just retire from their job some many holidays also they get like uh, holidays of sunday national holidays and annual leaves also some medical facilities also they get for their family uh, uh, for for their family and she also get medical leaves ma medical facilities they get for their families now let's see some difference between uh, permanent workers and casual workers the first very clear difference is uh, in permanent workers works are clearly defined that what they have to do if they are supervisor then they have to supervise the salesperson if they are uh, if they are having uh, uh like we can take example of profession like teaching so it is very much clearly defined that we have to do teaching but in casual workers they uh, they are unaware of the work that any work uh, the the person who hired them can ask for any kind of work from them uh, permanent workers get regular salaries but uh, the casual workers did not get uh, regular salaries they are actually hired uh, on uh, days and they get uh, upon uh, the work basis they get uh, permanent workers generally get off on sundays and lots of holidays festival holidays are there but for casual workers if they will not do work they will not get uh, paid okay uh, so permanent workers uh, they get fund for old age also as i explained in the previous one a uh, provident fund but in this casual worker because they are hired for daily wages so uh, and their job is also not permanent so they uh, are actually not they do not get any kind of uh, fund they get medical facilities of course permanent workers get medical facilities and medical leaves also uh, but casual workers did not get any kind of medical facilities so uh, this was the whole chapter i hope that you all enjoyed uh, like share and comment if you want to ask any question comment box is open for you i will definitely reply to your questions thank you thank you everyone signing out aman sharma take care